Good afternoon. Um, have you ever had a bad coaching experience? Or been in a seminar where the facilitator really rubbed you the wrong way and not in a good way? I'll break that one down, <laughs> I'll break that one down in a moment. Well, welcome to the episode where I'm going to talk about this in a bit more detail. This is more of a meta conversation versus just coaching tips and guidance. This is about the coaching and facilitation and seminar type business from personal experience. So welcome to episode 721. And the topic today is the, the, is the pain and in parentheses the price of bad coaching. And there's a hashtag in that I'm, I coined recently because it's been bugging me, which is the screw you guru because it really is relevant in this context. So before I jump into that, let me introduce myself so you know what I'm, suppo I'm supposedly about because <laughs> I've got to make sure I'm being clean as well. Um, I, my name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, that's true, an inspirational speaker, that's what I've heard, and a, and a uh, relationship attraction expert, which, I've, which I am and I've been. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine, absolutely, helping women create balance in love, life, and business. I've also um, been doing these talks now because of that passionate championing for the divine feminine um, for over two years now called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. Today's talk is kind of on that, not necessarily on that particular point, because this is about everybody who may have experienced this. And so I want to speak to this, this screw you guru theme, because it's been bugging me and I've had some really interesting conversations this week with people in the business that I know about certain people we also know. So I want to speak about this a little bit. As I said in other talks, and maybe if you don't know about this about me, I've been a student of the personal growth industry and human development for over 30 years. My first, the first seminar I took was in the late, the end of 1984. Some of you weren't even born then. <laughs> so I know I've got some, I've got some years on you. But I've been doing this work and studying and trainings for many teachings and, and studies and coaching stuff for many, many years. Um, but only sort of come out of the closet as it's supposed to speak and be a coach myself since 2000, well, a, a spiritual practitioner from my church since 2000, but a, a official coach, which I hate the term, in the relationship arena since 2012, 2011. So it's been a few years. Along that way, I have met some people, <laughs> to put it simply. And I'm very aware, well, let me, let me, let me say it this way first, the seminar environment. As I said, I've been in a lot of seminar rooms as a student and also as a staff teaching, I mean, uh, not teaching, um, supporting the room and facilitating the environment. And I learned a very powerful lesson. This, this something hit me way back when, which was about whether or not I would invest money with a seminar teaching or a company or a trainer or organization. Beyond the teaching um, content that I was interested in finding out more about, and the thing is, just to be totally transparent, there are many, many people teaching the same thing. So if you don't like the one you're with, go find somebody who works for you better. That's one of the teaching points, by the way. The reality I experienced, though, was in some organizations, the way they treated the volunteers, because most of the volunteers at these seminars, sorry, most of the people at, the, at these seminars were volunteers. I found some organizations that didn't really take care of the volunteers in any way, shape, or form. They actually abused them. And so I became clear I wasn't gonna invest any money as a student with that organization if they don't treat their volunteers with some respect. There are other seminar organizations who, who care for their volunteers incredibly, and I've actually volunteered with them, and so I was invested with them with no problem at all. So that was one of my deline deline delineations, is do, they, is do the organization that you're gonna invest your money with as a student, hi Michelle, hello to you too, good to see you. As a, as a participant in the, in the seminars and investment, investing your money in the organization, do you know that they treat their people well? Because if they don't, why would you invest? So that's, the, that's one of the bigger things, which is seminars and trainings and companies that do this sort of stuff. On the coaching level, there are coaches out there who, to be blunt, are snake oil salesmen. They are pitching something that, and this is the extreme, by the way, pitching something they have no experience in, pitching something that has no um, validity in what they're selling, but they have a great marketing campaign that gets people to spend money. And then after a period of time when they've made enough money, they just disappear because they can't back up what they're teaching with what they, sorry, can't pick up, can't back up what they're selling with what they, what they, with what they can't teach, put it that way. So that's the, that's the extreme of the coaching screw you guru thing. But the thing that's getting me more, more and more 
teed off is actually in between that spectrum, that, that, um, those extremes, which is this. There are people out there I have watched who purport to be the best, the most expert, most expert, the guru in certain teachings. Some of those gurus I'm a big fan of. They're, they're not, I don't want to say it that way because they're not gurus. <laughs> most of the gurus that I actually appreciate are ones who aren't, won't let themselves be called gurus because they're not gurus, they're teachers and they're guides and they're actually um, directors to indicate where to look, where to seek for your own truth. That's really powerful. But there are people who own or step up into the, the um, guru mantle, or put on the, the guru persona thing, and purport to be the expert or the, or the source for everything you need. And time and time again, it's been proven that they've been charlatans, they've been fakes, they've been snake oil salesmen. Um, there's a bunch of this showing up in the Tantra teaching, um, I won't say industry, but in the Tantra teaching arena. It's happening a lot in the more high level coaching um, industry where some of, the high end co some of the higher end coaches are being shown to be charlatans, to be fakes, to not really stand for their truth. Part, and let me sidebar for a second. Part of that truth is they live what they, 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 they walk their talk and they have integrity. This is one of the biggest things that bugs me. There are people who actually have good teaching information, but the thing is they didn't actually come up with it themselves and they don't give tribute to the person they got it from. This is one of the things I, I get really teed off about. In my book, I quote various people who I, rec I, I respect deeply because I want to use their content in my book, but out of respect, even though they'll never see my book probably, I still refer to them and say thank you for, and thank them for giving me that information. There are people I see on stage speaking who do not give tribute to where they get their information from. And I know where the information comes from half the time. And it, again, it, I allow myself to, I'm going to be careful. I allow myself to get pissed off. Yes, I, I, I know the self-facilitation skills. I've done enough of this work to know that. But what frustrates me, and it does frustrate me, and I let it frustrate me, <laughs> is I see people blindly paying money to be taught by these people who are fakes, who are basically stolen somebody else's ideas or use somebody else's teachings without tribute, who don't actually have experience with that teaching themselves. They just speak from the stage and market and share and sell like they know everything and they don't. There are also some people out in the industry who is so bombastically egotistical that um, borderline is, all, is a borderline, well, mm, not narcissistic, that's not the word, but it's more sociopathic. They have a, a lack of social grace, a lack of emotional feeling, a lack of human compassion because they know everything's right and you gotta be, you got to pay me to teach you the stuff that I know. And I have a big thing with that too. So as you can tell by what I've been sharing, there's a lot of things in there that trigger me, or I should say that I let trigger me because this is really one of these things that's been on my mind for a while. The screw, screw you guru is the, as the branding, as the branding, as the, um, Label, meme, sorry, hashtag, this is the word. I couldn't find the word for a second. I've been using that word for a while because it's been bugging me. And yes, it is alliteration, so a screwy guru sounded good to say it. But I've had this experience several times now, watching people and hearing from friends who have dealt with somebody who basically, at, up front, appeared to be wonderful, perfect, and, and great person to study with. But down the road, things happened, whether it was they were proven to be fakes, charlatans, didn't give money back when they were asked, when they didn't give refunds, um, had inappropriate sexual advances. That's happened quite a bit in the industry too. Just like in the entertainment industry and politically in the personal growth industry, which you think is the most awakened or woke people, there's just as much crap going on as there is anywhere else. And it's frustrating to watch, unfortunately, because it gives, well, it doesn't give it a bad name so much because it gives everybody a bad name, but it degrades the quality of of skill and heart and teaching that's out there because as I said before there are many incredible teachings out there great coaches great speakers great companies that teach great content unfortunately some of them that are in the industry aren't that and it's just for me I'm just, I, I mean this is not this give me a solution necessarily although it gave a couple of I already gave one idea out um, let me see if there's any more this, is, this has been one of these things that's been bugging me for a while, so I haven't actually got to the, uh, the answer yet, so this part of me is venting this out to um, 
just to get this out in, in the air and also to invite your comments and thoughts as well because if you've seen any experience like this or you've had an experience of this yourself I feel feel free to, to chime in as well um, I do not want you by the way to put any names in there if you want to message me privately you can do that but I don't want to have that out I'm not going to have a po have a, a video that's going to be up for slander or because the people I'm talking about I know who they are um, but I'm not going to name names because they are people who um, may not like what I'm saying because <laughs> this is one of those it's not a pretty picture so let me speak to solutions I think you won't have an understanding of what I've been venting about and speaking about is okay one-on-one -on -one coaching if the person you're looking to work with doesn't offer you a complimentary discovery session first to verify that you find out from them what you want, but also that they verify with you that you that they want to work with you as well, find another coach. Because there are coaches out there who basically will only give you a conversation if you become a client. And I personally have been taught by this by very good by experts in the field that I don't I do not want to work with everybody. <laughs> and I can't literally and and um, there isn't enough time to do that. But secondly or back to the first one is is there are people out there who won't do the work and if I have to work harder than the clients I don't want to work with them that's me transparently so that's why my, my first conversation with anybody is with a discovery session a complimentary talk just to see where we are so that's one thing if you don't get that secondly as I said earlier if you go to a, look at taking a seminar and you find out or you check in or you do research and find out what happens to the volunteers if they are treated with respect if they are cared about if they are supported, that's a good thing. If they are stressed out beyond belief, if they're not taken care of, if they're um, ignored, stuff like that, maybe you want to walk away and find another seminar. These are simple things you can you can incorporate. Obviously, there are things like the intuition. Um, you get you will get gut feelings of people if you know they're off off track or not, but you don't always trust it. So here's the thing. <laughs> You are your own expert. I won't say guru, I'm not using, not, not using the term in that context. But you have enough skill, enough resource, enough sensitivity to have a gut feeling about somebody or a company or a teaching or a lecture or a speaker to know if they align or not. Now, one caveat I'm going to give because I mentioned I dropped into that right at the beginning. Sometimes it can be because of some personality issue that may not be really what's going on. Sometimes it's something we get very clearly that there's there's definitely nothing there for you or they're there to control or take money. Sometimes differently. So an experience I had going back, this is probably 12, 13, 13, 14 years ago. I went to a free seminar um, that was about business and money, stuff like that. And through the whole seminar, I felt the um, the discord, my gut feeling was totally off and I wasn't, I was, I was basically sitting in, in discomfort but I listened enough not to do anything, I stayed through the whole weekend to get value out of it but I wasn't going to sign up for anything I went back and took the seminar again because I want to double check what I experienced about three or four months later different person facilitating and I had a whole different experience through the weekend I still didn't invest because I still felt something was off with the company but the issue I had with the person on stage was gone because I shifted and also the other person was different but what I realized also a lot of times is you've got to be willing to do, sometimes take a second look because sometimes you know clearly above all any other doubts that there is absolutely no way you want to invest with a certain teacher trainer coach speaker company and sometimes you may just want to have a second a second um, a second look because as I experienced myself there are different times, there are different options at different times that fit better. And so, as much as I've said, you've got to be really willing to trust your gut. Sometimes you can second guess. So, taking care of yourself is a priority. Learning how to grow from the right teachers is important. Right now, there's a thing in the news, I, I haven't read much about it, so I'm not going to speak much about it, that Tony Robbins is in the news again. Something that's been, whether it's accurate or not, I don't know. But it's not giving him good uh, press at the moment. Hang on. 
<coughs> excuse me. So even some of the good ones get roked over the coals. And I'm not saying good or bad. In his case, I don't know what's going on with that. But I am aware for myself, this is personal, that some of the teachings out there are really more mind control than true expansion, heart-centered elevation of who you are. And some of those mind control type courses are focused on putting money in the controller's pocket, not on changing your life for the better. Those are challenging, I know, because I've been I've, I've walked along the edge and haven't been safe. Been doing this journey since 19, 1984. I have learned quite a bit about how to feel into those energies to know when something lines up and not. And some companies have had thousands and thousands of people go through their courses, and I will never touch them because I can feel the the um, well, it's, it's called it mind control, energetic about them. So the screw you, the screw you, guru hashtag is really encompassing all of that. The individual, the group, the company, the speaker, the whole package, because there are so many people out there now in the training, speaking, coaching business that shouldn't be. So my advice to you as a um, careful consumer is do your homework, do you do, have your due diligence and be willing to check out who's really out there that lines up. And also, here's another piece, is do your research, meaning check around. If, if you're looking to find out about a seminar, or let me back up, if you're looking to find out about a coach or a speaker, who do you know that's been to their work? Who do you know that doesn't like their work? Get some real opinions. I would say if you're looking to work with me, please check around people who know me. I would absolutely welcome that because I have nothing, I have nothing to hide. You set my dirty laundry? No, I'm just thinking, no. <laughs> I'm just thinking trying to find something to hide. But this is the reality, is that all of us need to be viewed by the consumer, by the, the client, by the prospect, with, with a magnifying glass. And my daily talks are part of my exposing myself, so to speak. I'm in 721 so far. This is not just marketing hype. This is in, intended to be inspirational, educational, and entertaining in varying degrees. So I hope this has been of help to you and maybe give you some thought about your next choice of where you go to work with a seminar, a teacher, a trainer, a coach, etc. Take care of yourself the whole journey. I learned in my first seminar back in 84, which I've talked about before, that one of the first ground ones I learned was take care of yourself first so you can then take care of others. That actually was a game changer that took me about 25 years to figure out. So take care of yourself first before you take care of anybody else. Take care of yourself first before you go take out, before you invest with any coach, any guide, any speaker, any company, any seminar company, before you take care of them. So do your due diligence. Research, find out, learn what lines up for you, and then go from there. Because yes, it's important for us to all grow and learn from new people, to learn how to be better people ourselves, and also to become more contributing towards the, the planet. And picking the right people to do that with is important because if you don't, you may not get what you want. That's kind of obvious, I know. So with that, I thank you for watching. I, I'm realizing I'm petering out. I don't have a solution beyond those two things. I hope it's been of help to you. If you have any um, experiences you want to share with me, either anonymously in public or with names privately, you can do that um, over social media. This is my Facebook Live, so you do it here in Facebook, it's okay. If you do it on YouTube as well, you can do it there. And I'll give you the links to find me in my broadcasts. And if you want to sit down and have a chat, um, I'll, I'll put the contact form in the comments. You can reach out to me if you want to talk, and then we can actually have a free chat before we go anywhere. Because again, we have a complimentary discovery session before you work with me. Um, having said all that, again, replays, yes. So this is my Facebook Live. I get every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page here on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. My business page on Facebook is Barry Selby, the author where all the replays live. And the replays also go to my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And the playlist on there is Messages from the Masculine. Again, I hope this has been of help to you, been of inspiration, perhaps it's shocked or stunned you because maybe you've realized you went through some seminars you shouldn't have gone through. I don't know. But if you have any thoughts about this, please put it down in the comments. And uh, I appreciate you watching. This has been a vent more than anything else. So this has been selfish. I need to talk about it for me. So I hope you got some value as well. I'll back in tomorrow, same time, same channel. And uh, we'll see what comes up then. Take care of yourself. And uh, definitely... Do your research.
I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.